Hey guys, it's Dean Ray with Lauren Yates on Rave It Up. Her hair's a hollow gold Her lips a sweet surprise Her hands are never cold She's got bad and signs You can watch me cry Throw me away up track But I'll keep coming I'll keep coming back Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up. And I'm here with Dean Ray today. Hey, Dean, how are you going today? I'm not Lauren. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> I'm Dean. You're Dean. You're Dean Ray. And everybody should know you. If you don't know who he is, then you're living under a rock, I think. Right? No, you just haven't heard of me, I guess. Well, look him up. He's so talented, and I am absolutely privileged to have you on the show today. Thank you, dear. So thank you for coming along. Thank you for having me here. And welcome to Rave It Up. It's your first time on the show. Welcome to the Secret Garden. The Secret Garden. You don't know where we are. Now, because this is the first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I think we should start from the beginning, because that only makes sense to you, right? Right. We mainly all know you from The X Factor in 2014. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to know, how was your experience with that? Um, It was very, very tiring. Very tiring? And lots of rules. And um, I don't like rules very much. I'm not, you know, don't tell me what time I have to be home. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or what time I've got to be in bed. Other than that, then, I was very, it was very educational. I learned a lot about interviews, this yeah. sort of thing. And to start with, it's awkward having a camera in your face all the time. But th- you get used to that within a day because there's a, a little camera right in your face. Mm. And then... Um, at every angle, right? I'm yeah, <laughs> you've just got to get used to not looking at it. It's a strange thing. When there's a camera there all the time filming you in your hotel room getting ready... Um, like I, I, they used to, they'd come into the rooms about five in the morning to wake you up with cameras, you know. That's fun. I'm so glad they had a master key to the hotel rooms. Not really, I no. don't know. No. Ugh. Even before you get all your makeup and hair Sometimes if I had a separate room, if it was like an apartment room, um, I would lock my door. Yeah, do not then, come <laughs> in. They couldn't get in. Let me sleep. <laughs> they'd knock and I'd be like, no, you're yeah. not coming in today. Now, I've, I've actually interviewed a few people from The X Factor and The Voice and all those talent shows. Do you feel like you were misinterpreted at all? Or do you think, looking back in on it, you were like, oh, you know, that was good? I mean, it was pretty straightforward. They, they got it right pretty well, except I'm not... I wouldn't consider myself a rock star or a rock god or, you know, a bad boy or any of that. I'm, I'm more just uh, straight, straightforward. I'm not straight edge, but I'm straightforward. <laughs> Yeah. I'm very, uh, very blunt and honest, and in the music industry, that comes across as being rebellious because you speak your mind. If someone t- tries to put words in your mouth and you correct them, they don't like that. So mm. it comes across as this rebellious kind of thing. And but yeah, I guess they were trying to represent me as this rock and roll dude. And don't get me wrong, I play rock, I write rock, mm. but my main style that I've always written has been sort of more acoustic. I guess acoustic pop indie rock sort of stuff so um, I had to change that I had to chat to my mentor and said look and this is like in the second week of live shows I said I need to play you a song if I had five minutes left to live this is the song I would play to you wow and I said sums up my whole style and what I'm about and I played her this song and she went okay and that just changed the whole course of the show so then from there on out was very much what I'm about yeah. yeah. That's deep, though. The last song that you'd play. Yeah. What's the best way to put the point? Jeez. I mean, that's, that's how you know what, what song means the most, mm. is if you only had one song to play. Well, you've done well. Obviously, it made a difference. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. Wow. And before the show, you were a traveling musician. Is that mm-hmm. correct? Yes. So, how did you, why did you decide to go on the show? More exposure? Yeah, well, I'd, um, I've been touring around and just playing cover gigs and I needed to... I, I've been offered a chance to go on shows like that in the past but I didn't feel I was ready to handle the pressure and I wasn't good enough as a singer or a, an artist, you know. I hadn't mm. developed a, my artistry, which is the main thing. So many people that go on those shows are not artists. They sing in their bedroom and that is... That's, that's it. it. Yeah. So that's why you never hear of them again. People are like, oh, why do they disappear? It's like because they don't have a live show. They can't perform live, interact with the crowd and get a connection happening. That's what people want. They have no idea what to do afterwards. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to make sure that if I did go down that path with the reality show that I'd have all of this in play 
and have a tour booked. Already? I already had wow. a sold out tour while I was still on the show. That is incredible. So I had the machine built. Congratulations. And all the people were, um, my team was all working behind the scenes and booking everything in and getting it all happening. So um, I walked straight off the show, had several weeks off to promote the album and then I was on tour. And I've been on wow. tour since. How long were you a traveling musician for before the show? Uh, about probably six years, I guess. I traveled around and played. So I, I remember I left home when I was 15 because my parents lived in rural Queensland, like southwest Queensland. There was only, there were cattle farms. So the work that I could have been doing out there was either fencing or mustering or branding or uh, horse breaking and stuff. And I didn't really want to do that. Mm. Was, you know, I, I didn't want to be out there working when I could have been somewhere else playing. Yeah. So I left. And um, I mean, I worked a bunch of different jobs over those years, like probably about 20 or so different jobs. Wow. So every time you go on tour, you lose the job. So you're like, man, I really have to go on tour. And they're like, well, if you leave, you can't come back to this job. And you're like, okay, mm. see you later. <laughs> um, so about six years I did that, I reckon. You know, oh, I don't remember. Maybe eight years. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Does. So there was nothing else you wanted to do with your life? It was always music? When I was a child, it was music was something that I always did from birth. It was just always there. So I always played gigs on weekends, but all the while wanting to be something else. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be a cricketer. I wanted to be a bull rider. I wanted to be a... What else I want to be? I want to be an actor. For a while and then but I realized that still possible was in this sort of, industry it was all leading to a similar thing yeah and then when I was 12 I played a gig and I was backstage and realized it just clicked I was looking at all the the stage lights and the black curtains and leads and tape marks and I was like I like this mm. so I've been doing it ever since because your parents played in several bands didn't they is that where you mm. found your love for music yeah, yeah. Well, that's good Look at that, it's all just connected and you're meant to do it. In place. And who knows, you may still be able to do acting in the future. It's all yeah. in the same sort of industry. I'd be one of those actors that doesn't change. You know, it'd be just me. Yeah. But I have a different name and I'm wearing <laughs> different clothing. It'd be that kind of like like Owen Wilson. Yeah. Or Luke Wilson. They don't change in their oh movies. Oh god, that's so true. They just don't. They're just exactly the same in every film and they that's them. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so how that's they you. Are. That, that'll be I'd you. I'd be one of those. Yeah. Wow. Well, hopefully, we look forward to that in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's something that I want to get into at some stage. Not right now, though. Mm. But um, yeah, it's definitely something I'd like to look at. Yeah, on the bucket list. Mm. <laughs> and also on the show before your audition, because um, I watched when you were on the show, and mm. you were saying when you were, you know, traveling around being a musician, you, as you said, you left home when you were fifteen. But you kind of, you wanted to, uh, I guess, be broke and starve and you even well, ate from trash your, cans. It, yeah. adds to your, it adds to your artistry. That's um, crazy. That's like a great, so I guess, learning experience. I was, I was busking and yeah, I've, I've eaten from a few different places or you just get, you know, you go into a bar and say, look, man, I'll play for, for food, mm. you know, and accommodation if I can. Um, but there's, there's only been a couple of times where you quite you can't get one of those gigs and you're just stuck in a town in your mm. car and you'll just I, I used to just find a pizza shop because they and usually go throw to their trash can <laughs> yeah people haven't picked up their order they throw it out in a box oh. so it's not so they're doing you the favor <laughs> it's not too bad yeah um it's not great but it's it's yeah i feel like now being in the industry and being well known would that have been like a I guess, an advantage over other artists that you've experienced that? You've been the lowest point? I've been the lowest point many times, yeah. but that adds to, that. that is a building block for your artistry. Yeah. You know, that's the main thing. People will call themselves an artist, but they're not. Mm. They're not one. You need to become an artist and understand who you are yourself. And if you're an artist that you, you want to be an artist, but you don't know what you stand for or who you are or what you do, go to counselling doesn't mean mm. you're crazy. The yeah. counsellor will tell you in about three sessions what you value, what you love, who you are. And you just go, oh, you're so right. Okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. I remember getting that oh, years ago. I went to a couple of counselling sessions to find out where I was at, who I was, mm. you know, and find out because I was at that stage where you struggle between what your parents 
think you are and what you think you are and what you actually are mm. you know and you need to figure that out otherwise you'll just go around and around in circles and not connect with people yeah I guess being from that lowest point now you must be so appreciative of where you want out yeah. right it's a good way to keep humble man mm. I mean I still when I'm off the road if I'm off the road for a couple of weeks I'll go and volunteer somewhere and you know at an op shop or I'll go and help someone like friends of mine that are builders go just go and help them that's so you humble, know, I do, love like, that. Tiling and stuff. It's good to yeah. get back to reality of what people do and realise that getting paid thousands to play for an hour is unbelievable. Mm. You know, when you go and do stuff like that and you you work your ass off for 20 bucks in an hour. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... I mean, I don't get paid because I do it <laughs> for mates. Yeah. It's just fun. But, yeah, it's... You've got to be you've got to have that gratitude for anything. I mean, the best way to start a day is to um, to wake up and pinpoint everything that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, you mightn't have the best car in the world or you mightn't have a car at all, but, hey, you've got shoes, you know? Yeah. My, my, my favourite thing to do is I'll just go for a walk in a park with no shoes on and realise cool. that I can feel grass at the bottom of yeah. my feet and actually walk. Walking... People get up and they'll be whinging about life, but they've just walked to the bathroom. Mm. You're like, do you know how many people would love to just walk to the bathroom? Yeah. And actually be able to use the bathroom? <laughs> it's just incredible. So people, simple. People get so caught up in their own lives and their own minor issues, they forget that their, their health is the number one priority. Mm. And if you've got that, you can do anything else. Yeah. So humble. I think you're giving everyone listening some really good advice as well about where they stand in life and be a bit more appreciative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, I got a friend who was burnt horribly in a car accident. Oh. Um, he lost an arm and a leg and his face and he's had plastic surgery put on his face. He was told he'd never ride a horse again and he had a saddle custom made that fits his leg stump in it. Wow. And his, and his uh, prosthetic leg hangs off the front of it and he was riding horses after 12 months. Wow, so he can still do what he loves. Yeah, but it's just, you don't let things slow you down. You've just got to look, reevaluate what you actually have. Mm. Stop thinking about what you want. Yeah. You've got what you need. Yeah, and he's a pure example. Nothing's impossible. No, yeah. nothing's impossible. Yeah. And also, I've got to bring this up because I think you're extremely talented, especially with your guitar playing. How long have you been playing guitar for? Uh, I started when I was 13, and it was just a thing because I was playing drums before that. And I never understood in a rehearsal what key changes were and what, you know, when they were talking about chords and keys and things like that. I had no idea. So I just wanted to learn basic guitar as an understanding of, um, you know, I just wanted to understand how it all worked. And, and I took to it immensely. And a few years later, I was having lunch with Tommy Emmanuel, and it's like it just took off. Mm. You know, I don't, I got addicted to it, I guess. I just got very hooked on it and enjoyed it so much. It was just a release for me. And uh, I just kept challenging myself, I guess, yeah. Yeah. So have you been playing guitar longer than you've been singing? Yeah, or? man. I I started singing two years later. But it was only to convey the messages in the songs that I was writing. Mm. I didn't want to sing and I didn't enjoy singing for a long time. I've only, in the last 12 months, actually started to enjoy singing because... I'm actually okay at it now. Yeah. You know, before that, I'm just like, oh, I wish I could sound like this, wish I could sound like that. But I've gradually been putting in the work to get there. Mm-hmm. And now I can do the things that I wanted to do, which is simple as this. Sing in tune. Yeah. That was all. <laughs> Sing in tune all the time and deliver it. Deliver the song really, really well. Like, that's what I wanted to do is deliver it with, with meaning as if I'm talking to you. Mm. Well, we're glad that you decided to start singing. Yeah. I mean, people like my singing and mm. I'm always shocked by that because I don't like it. Really? I listen to my voice and go, it's in tune, but I, I don't like listening to my voice or my songs. Wow. You know, I'd That's prefer to listen to someone else. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Quick fact about Dean Ray. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And how many guitars do you have? I'm guessing it's a lot. <laughs> I had seven stolen last year. I read that. Yeah. Sorry um, to hear that. But I've accumulated about eight since since well wow. i had to, had to make up for it so about 15 or 20 i don't know i haven't counted so you've got like one more than every day of the week <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's usually about yeah it's 
more than two for each day. Yeah. And have you named them all? No, I used to, and then it just got out of control. Just too many guitars to name. Yeah. Too many of your, like, babies, I guess. I just call them the something. Yeah. You know. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you could go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> and then the extra day. I could. For the eighth. I could. An idea for you. <laughs> You're full of ideas. I know. Lauren's got so many ideas. Come to me when you're a bit stuck. <laughs> yeah, she's just... You should sell these ideas to people. Thanks for the idea. I uh, won't. I'm all about <laughs> ideas too. <laughs> See, great minds. Just yeah. push them together and we come up with some great stuff. We do. Yeah. That's what uh, happens. For the people that don't know, your last name isn't actually Ray. Why did you decide to change that? Because I like to have separation between who I am and my persona. Ooh, because that's deep. who I am is different to um, my stage persona. It's a different person. It's like mm. split personality, you know. Oh. I'm not this polite <laughs> as a rule. <laughs> so I needed a persona. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's like you're living double lives, pretty much. Well, in a sense, yes, but it's not, it's not that much different, you know. Um, I'm not that different to me off stage, mm. but um, there is a thing that happens when I walk out on stage that is very performer. You can't be a performer in general society. They're called show-offs. <laughs> That's true. You know? Yeah. They're the kind of people that will go to the gym and take pictures of themselves instead of working out, mm. you know? It's... um. It's, yeah, considered a show-off. If you're on stage, it's not. It's a performer because that's what you're doing. But if you're going to do that without a paying audience, you're an idiot. Yeah. So I just like to have that division. Where I put this... I put all my jewellery on and I am Dean Ray. Wow. Do you ever catch yourself, like, maybe filling out professional paperwork and you've got to write your real name and then you accidentally write Dean Ray? I've, I've signed <laughs> bank forms with the with the other signature, yes. That's wow. been awkward. <laughs> put a love heart and a kiss one? on there. Yeah. Like, sorry, dude. <laughs> Because you're so used to just signing it as Dean Ray for fans, aren't you? Yeah. 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 It just becomes a habit. Wow. It's like a total... It gives us a look into, I guess, behind the scenes of Dean Ray because I guess us, you know, well, gets, fans don't really think about that. You get, <laughs> um, you can get caught up in it. A lot of artists get caught up in it. Mm. And, um, I mean, a lot of them don't. But the, if you're going to be smart about it, you need to keep yourself humble. So my place, my, my home is... Um, it's a little two-bedroom cottage, and it's all vintage. All of Ooh, it's old. That's nice. There's no television. Oh, well, there is. I've got an old 70s one, but it doesn't work because it just doesn't work anymore. 70s one's just for the look. It's just <laughs> for the look, you know. It's just for a vibe. But I just listen to records. I don't have a microwave. I just have very the bare essentials that a person needs so that... You know, when I do go, when I go on, on tour and I'm in a hotel with TV, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I love ads. <laughs> I love ads. It's TV. Yes, this is great. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just surround myself by old things. Yeah, I keeps like you that. humble. Yeah, I'm like the most humblest person I've ever met. Out of all the artists I've interviewed, so you've got to be it's, humble. It's you've got to have quality. an element of confidence because you need that if someone's trying to walk all over you and overpower you. Mm. You've got to have that little bit of confidence left to go no. Yeah. Not doing that. Especially in this but industry. you've got to... You've just got to remain a, a, a real human being. Mm. Love it. Give me chills. It was so deep. <laughs> it could be the fact that the sun shone on us for a little bit and then went away. Yeah. And now you're cold again. Yep. <laughs> At least we're not in the wind anymore. Well, maybe it was Gary in the secret garden. Gary? Is that your friend? No, Gary was sitting here before and he leant back and vanished. I don't know where he is. Yeah. He's in the secret garden, the abyss of the green. We'll probably see him at the end. <laughs> He's probably eaten some of the wild berries, and now he's really high <laughs> on poison, poison berries. This is uh, Dean's friends. <laughs> Gary. Now, you are on your Rebellion tour with Chris Eden yes. all around Australia. Mm -hmm. So, for the people that haven't checked you out before and haven't mm -hmm. seen you perform, and I guess even for your fans, what can they expect from these shows on your tour? Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Awesome dash ness. <laughs> um, it's quite... It's quite intimate. Um, you get to see a bit about who we are as people mm. and as artists. So uh, Carissa's set's very intimate. She'll talk about home and, and her childhood and things like that. Um, my set's a bit faster paced. 
and but you but the songs is where you'll hear you know you'll get to know me a bit more through that and then at the end when we're on together it's just fun mm. you get to see us kind of relaxed i guess yeah and it's all acoustic isn't it yeah it's all acoustic wow that's so, good yeah. raw get, very raw gets back to the rawness of yes. it all yes it's like sushi <laughs> sushi yes all right <laughs> interesting good metaphor for it all i guess yes mm. and you just recently before at the Crown in Melbourne, didn't you? Yes, yes. How was that? That's a big venue. It's actually quite interesting because I got there and the guy said, he took my gear in, I parked my car and he said, you go up here and it's the black door on your left. I've walked up and I saw a black door that was on the left. So I went through it, but it was actually a, a fire escape Oh. that locks when you walk into it. Oh no. So I was just locked in this fire escape. If there were a fire, I don't think that would work well because I couldn't get out of it. Mm. It's like, well, where am I escaping to? What am I supposed to do here? Doesn't it go all the way down to the bottom? Yeah, and, and then the door was locked. <laughs> Again? So I was like, How I can't. I walked all the way. I couldn't. I had to, um, I had to call my management. I said, guys, there was I'm, a reception in there too? I'm locked. <laughs> Yeah, there was. Okay, good. It was actually good. quite funny. Whew. I called called my management and I said, I'm locked in the stairwell. And she goes, oh, do you have phone service? I said, well, yes, I'm, I'm talking you. to you. And she's like, oh, yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, security ended up finding me. It took them a while. It was it was an interesting time for me. Then we did the sound check and played the gig. It was just a really, really nice room. I like the, I like the palms, man. It's a very How nice How long place. were you waiting in the uh, fire oh, about 20 escape minutes. for? <laughs> Jeez, that's quite a long time when you think about it. Just yeah. being trapped in a stairwell. It got hot in there. Ugh. Yeah. What a great way to start your experience. I played a crossword on my phone oh, for a while. That was fine. Thank That's goodness it. you didn't run out of phone battery or reception. Yeah, no, I was totally fine. That would fine. have been very interesting. I had stairs did. to sit on. It was really good. It was really <laughs> you, you quite You probably a don't nice, get to sit very often, do you? It was a nice moment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's funny. That's a really good story to tell. So keep that in mind for future interviews. Um, <laughs> now, throughout your career... We would absolutely love to know, what have you found the hardest thing about the industry? You obviously started from the bottom, so that's a the hardest good thing place to be, start. Um, we just all the lying and backstabbing that people do to try and get themselves in front of you. Mm. You know, the, the, the things that people will... They'll try and manipulate you into doing something they want. And you're like, sorry, mate. You're a suit, not an artist. Yeah. I'm the artist, you know, and that's where your ego comes out. That's when you've got to pull it out and set things straight. Say, no, it doesn't work like that. It works like this. Well, it's your work, isn't it? You want it, even though people don't want to see you, like, having it your way, I guess, but you still want to you've got to be work in control together. of that product. You've got to work together. Yeah. My, my team that I work with, we all work really well together. We have open Good. discussions weekly about where we're going and what we're doing and everyone throws ideas out and if ideas aren't good like if I throw an idea out my team will just say no that is crap <laughs> and they'll tell me why and I'm like oh yeah it is kind of crap isn't it <laughs> so but I don't like people that will um I don't like yeah the people that in, instead of that they will just try and manipulate you into doing what they want mm. and there's no they don't you know, there's, it's like their way or the highway, and you know, there's a, there's a way to work those people, and I quite enjoy the uh, psychological part of screwing their minds, but that's probably my least favourite part because it just it's such a downer, you mm -hmm. know. When there's it's a vibe, it should be music should be fun, and the whole industry should be good fun, and everything's good, you know, and 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 business should be exciting, not yeah. a chore. Should be positive, right? Yeah, mm. and probably I guess actually my least favourite thing is training, is rehearsing and practicing. I really hate that. Really? Yeah, I can't You just want to get it. out there and do it. I just want to, you know, jump forward 10 years and go, wow, I'm really good now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or it could be the I other way. I didn't have to go, do that wow, work. Okay. I'm an alcoholic now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Let's hope not. <laughs> I spent all that money. No, um, yeah, I, I hate that. I lock myself in rooms and I'll rehearse and, and practice. I call it training because it's, it's, I don't just do it. You know, I don't just practice for 20 minutes. I'll practice for eight hours. Oh, wow. And it's training <laughs> because it's you're sweating it out and you're exhausted afterwards. So, yeah, that's probably actually my least favourite part. Mm. And yeah. have you found any problems with haters or bullying? Um, not really. I mean, I do. Like, they send things in sometimes, but 
I'm I know who I am and comfortable with who I am yeah and I like who I am that's good and if you don't like who I am it's your loss that's mm. that's my take on it there's uh nine billion people in the world or something I can handle not having four billion yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. You can have the rest, you though, know, that are actually if like a, you. If there's a few people that don't like who I am, well, go and find someone that like who you are. But I just imagine how miserable their little life is if they spend the time to go onto your page and say that, you know, you that I suck. It's like, dude, great. Yeah. I've been laid more times this week than you have in your whole life. So, oh. <laughs> you know. In their face. Yeah, in your whole face. <laughs> Wow, that's it's an eye opener, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, what else can we expect from you in the future? You've obviously got the rest of the Rebellion tour. Yes. Well, after the tour, we're looking at we're looking at uh, releasing a single. Oh, cool! Another in, one. Yeah. Yay. So August, we're going to drop a song, and then we'll most likely drop a song straight after that. I'm looking at getting an album out later on in the year. Um, and it all really depends on the traction of that album as to what happens next. Mm. Whether you go on another tour or... Oh, I'll definitely go on yeah. another tour. But as far as, you know, where I end up, it depends on how well that album connects with people here and overseas. Yeah. So everyone, go check it out. You check need your support. Out. We're looking forward to the new songs, though. That'll be good. It'll be cool. Well, this yeah. whole tour is, is all the new songs. Yes. Oh, so there's awesome. no cover songs from from the show it was it's all all the new you. material mm. and what advice would you give to the listeners who might want to become a singer there's no substitute <laughs> no substitute for hard work the Ooh. only way to become successful is to work hard there's no pyramid scheme that you can become successful um, if you want wealth you need to work for it um, if your wealth becomes more important to you than your own happiness then you need to stop mm. and reevaluate what your morals are and what your values are um, I love money but who doesn't I love <laughs> health more yeah because I would rather walk through a field a broke man than than crawl through it a rich man you know any day oh, that's a good line so you just got to work for it and I'm talking really work so if someone else is working 10 hours a day I'll work 12 hours if they work 12 hours I'll work 15 mm. if they work 15 I won't sleep and um, that's just how I how I have gotten to where I am now just by working harder than my my opposition I guess mm. that's good advice for all listeners mm. thank you and then Arnold Schwarzenegger is also a good motivator oh gosh he's yes great. he is he's got some cool things to say if you're ever feeling lazy and like oh you know just say just say you want to lose 30 kilos and you can't find motivation for that. Go, go look at his watch, quotes. Go and watch mm. any, anything to do with an athlete will help motivate you or anything to do with a, someone that works in an industry that's very st strenuous and uh, you just get some motivation from them. Be like, oh, okay, all right, mm. I'll go and do this, you know. You just have to... The hardest worker wins. The hardest and smartest. You've got to work smart. Otherwise, mm. you just go around in circles, you know. If it's not working, you need to... Reevaluate. Reevaluate mm. and then... Go somewhere else. Go up. Yeah. Even Dwayne The Rock Johnson has some really good quotes I've found. Yeah. He's really good for motivation as well. So, mm. there you go. Anyone Two people to check it, out. Anyone that's very successful at their industry is worth looking at their mentality mm. and their work ethic. Because they know all lazy the Because lazy people stuff. do not win in mm. the end. That's very true. So, don't be lazy if you want to be successful. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we are getting to the end of the interview, unfortunately. It's very sad. It's gone really quickly, hasn't it? It um, has. But as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Nothing. Nothing? Everything that's happened to me has made me who I am. I think it's all been perfectly planned mm. to get me to... Here at the Secret Garden. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's so deep and so humble. So don't lose that quality, by the way. It's uh, oh, a bit an hard, amazing yeah. quality to have. Yeah. Now, before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where should yes. they go? You can head to my Facebook page, which is Dean Ray Music. Mm -hmm. If you just Google me, you'll find my Facebook page. Um, or you can head to my website. Um, I have, I'm constantly on my Twitter account. If anyone messages me there, it's usually, well, it's always me. Yeah. 
you were like, is this the real Dean Ray? And I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> You're like, how do we know? I'm like, oh, I, t- I, I guess am. I have no way of proving that. <laughs> um, and Twitter, I'm on Twitter as well. Yeah. It's cool. all just Dean Ray music, man. Good. You got to be on everything these days, don't you? Yes, you do. I got to update it all too. <laughs> yeah. Can't just have the page and not update it. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Dean. It was no a worries. pleasure. We'd definitely love to have you on again in the future. Let's do it. Definitely. Let's do it tomorrow. Yes. Oh, love it. I'll Just be back right tomorrow. after. Yeah, <laughs> after you're another one of your gigs, it'll be great. Yes. Let I'm me know how the next gig goes. I will. But yeah, definitely. We'll keep in contact and we'll make it happen. Yes. Thank you, but Lauren. Good luck with the tour. And uh, I know you'll be at Edinburgh Pop tonight. So. Yes. I only live down the road from that, but I unfortunately can't come. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to come to one of the shows. Maybe All Rudy right. Hill. I saw that you're going to go to Rudy Hill. So Rudy, Hill. Rudy, Rudy Hill. Hill. Rudy Hill. Rudy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> now, for everyone watching, make sure you go check out Dean on his tour and buy some tickets to one or many of his shows. That'd be even better, right? Come to more yes. than one show. <laughs> Any show you wish to go to, I will be at. Of course. But it is your tour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.